In this video, I will show you how to use Gavel's Word add-in. So here I am in a template, a Word document, that I use over and over again. I have already created in Gavel the questions that I need in my workflow. They're questions that I ask myself every time when I'm filling these documents out manually, and I'm going to turn this into an automation. So once I've already done that, created the questions, or even just created some of the questions in the workflow, then I can come over here to my template in my Word document and open the Word add-in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the relevant workflow. In this case, it's the employment agreement. I can search for it here or scroll through my workflows. Once I do that, I'm going to have all of those variables available to me to put into this document. I'm also at this time going to upload my document to the output documents page of my workflow, just so that it's there. It will make things easier later. So I'm in my document and now I can grab the simple variables and start populating my document. So here, for example, I want to put in the company name. I'm going to go over here. I can either scroll through all of my variables that are available to me, or I can search. I know it's called entity name. I'm going to choose it, and then I can choose the format that I want to put it in as. So standard uppercase or first letter capital. I'm going to do all uppercase. And so now it puts in this syntax. So the add-in allows you to do some basic formatting like this of the text that goes in, but you can also do formatting that you would in a normal Word document like color or bold or italics or underline or size if you want to as well. So say in this case, I want to make this green and I want the company name to be bolded and really large actually. I can do it just like that. I will then continue through and put in the rest of my variables. So I'm going to put in the address variable, format it in standard, and just insert it like this. And say I want to do an address too, just like that. And then city. I'll insert it like that. I'll put the comma and space that always goes in between city and state. And just keep putting in the fields like that. And then we'll final finish it up with the zip code. I can also put in today's date. That is a variable that is in my uh, workflows. So it's today. And I could choose the format. Say I want to put it in like this. Great. And so I'll just keep going through my document and adding these fields, these simple variables, in the relevant places. You can see I've done it in some places, but I also have some places where I still have yet to do it. The other thing that I'm going to use the word add-in for is putting conditions around text that only appears conditionally. So in this case, I have a piece of text that only appears depending on the type of employee. It's an employee that gets a bonus. So I'm going to put a condition around this text so that it only shows up when it's the type of employee that should get an, a bonus. So in this case, I'm going to use show phrase when in order to put bookends around this text so that it only shows in a certain circumstance. So I'm going to use show phrase when, and I'm going to find the bonus question, which I have already found here. Select it, and then I'm going to build the condition. So this variable is yes. When this is answered as yes, then inside this condition, then I want this text to show up. I can also use show paragraph when for the same concept. And the difference here is just the way that the spacing appears. So if I wanted to just show text, for example, um, I can do based on the same condition. In this case, it's putting the bookends around the entire paragraph, and it will respect the numbering and all of that. So you'll use the show phrase when and the show paragraph when, depending on whether you're inserting full paragraphs and full pages of text, then you'd use show paragraph when, or just words or phrases, then you would use show phrase when. But the point is that you can conditionally insert text into your documents using these parts of the word add-in. Other things that you can do with the add-in are create numerical calculations. So you have these calculations available to you. You can add more to the calculations and you can use your number variables in different formats to build calculations and insert them into your documents. 
You can do a similar thing with dates. So I can build calculations. I can get the length of time between two dates or add or subtract time from a certain date. And I'm using my date variables for this. I can also insert repeating items, which is a type of question that we have in Gabble, and I can show them in various formats. We have a different video that will explain that in more detail, but I can choose the repeating item field and then the attributes that I want to include in that list or whichever format that I'm going to use, and then I can insert that wherever I want in my document. I can also use the word add-in to insert signatures. So this can either be with the regular signature question type that we have in Gavel, or it can be with the DocuSign anchors that we also have in Gavel at the pro tier. If, say, I'm working in here and I'm working in Gavel alongside and I'm adding a variable to my workflow, the way that I get that variable to show up again in Gavel is to click refresh. And when I click refresh after having saved that in my workflow, then that variable will now appear here. So just it's a good thing to know that this exists. After I have made all the changes that I want to make, or say I'm just done for the day, and I'm going to come back to this tomorrow, I will go down here to select a document to replace. And I'm going to select this one because this is the name of this document. It's already uploaded in Gavel on the workflow. I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to click Update in Gavel in order to basically save my work. I can also use this check for errors button if I want to see if I have any errors in my document. This would only be relevant if, say, you deleted a bracket or added an errant space or something in the syntax. And another useful thing to know is that in this upper corner, there's a little eye that you can hover over and you can get some information here if you need to get support being a good one. And just to show you, this is the rest of this document, which I've already been automating. And you can see there are some fields throughout. I have some conditions and some regular variables throughout my document. And that's what your template will look like when it's all done. So that's the end of this video, which shows you how to use the Gavel Word Add-in.